I was going through some pretty tough times and I thought this would be really good for me right now. As a human being, I've really grown in the poetry group. Sometimes people cry when they're reading, but it, it always turns out to have a, a kind of therapeutic healing kind of aspect to it. Well, there's a lot of emotion that comes up sometimes in the class, and you can see that some of these people really needed to communicate the things that they were saying. This is about your life, and so the thing saying, my life is poetry, I totally get what that means now. A few years ago, Senior Journal released a report about how barely one quarter of seniors believe in equal rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender seniors. So this manifests itself in discrimination, censorship, and forcing seniors to go back into the closet. I'm Stephen Raines. I'm the founder of the My Life is Poetry Workshop, which is an autobiographical poetry workshop for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender seniors. So I used to write poetry when I was younger. Being retired and not having anything to do with my time, and when I saw it was offered, I decided just to do it. There's lots of other things I could be doing with my time, but this is a worthwhile thing. Stephen's great because I had never considered myself a poet, and I still don't. In classic terms, is giving me a, a format to explore that area. We live in a youth-obsessed culture, and so the wisdom that comes with age and a lived life is undervalued, and definitely the stories of queer seniors are underrepresented. And I wanted this workshop to create a platform for those stories to be shared. Lucky number seven, or indications that I'd be a lesbian. <laughs> With sharing of a professional writer's poem, um, so evocative, it sort of jumps over to the, to the side of the brain that's creative. It's such a childhood poem, right? There's so many things that she really does capture what it's like to be seven, right? But this isn't just any seven-year-old poem. This is about being queer and seven years old. We learn things from each other and we hear things that are echoed from other people's hearts and from other people's past and their histories. And we hear about their parents and their brothers and their sisters and their schools and the, the sort of things that all of us can relate to. And so it's a little bit provocative in the way that he approaches it and in the way that it unfolds, but that is the best thing about it. I enjoy very much uh, reading my poetry and prose um, to other people. Writing it and telling people about it or sharing it with people are not at all the same thing. I will die and be done with this loveless life, but I am timid, too afraid, so I just walk away. By giving us these details, that's what sticks with us. Like, that's the thing that really moves us, and that's how we can relate even more with this story. My honesty has grown and grown and grown. Gloria moved into my school's neighborhood, blonde like me, but a bit scruffy. Uh, for instance, today was the first time in my entire life that I used the word queer or queerness. That's not of my generation. <laughs> the students are mining their personal experiences and turning them into poetry. I think that they know every time their pen is touching the paper that they're doing a really bold, revolutionary act. You don't need to know more about the father than that. As long as Stephen is going to be doing this class here, I will participate in it because what I've learned from him is about writing and about myself. It's a good experience, an excellent experience. He is so encouraging. I felt absolutely safe. I think Stephen makes it comfortable to do this. It's a very valuable class. I, I wanted to write about my life. So I, I truly believe with this class, I'm gonna finally write my story.